Czechia wins gold at the IIHF World Championships, and Lukas Dostal was the backbone of that gold medal winning team. And I think it's time we have the conversation again about Lukas Dostal becoming the number one goaltender for the Ducks. Hmm. I'll talk about that on this edition of Locked On Anaheim Ducks. Your Locked On Ducks, your daily podcast on the Anaheim Ducks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Anaheim Ducks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jason J.D. Hernandez. I've been covering hockey for well over a decade. Also have covered the San Diego Goals for Defend the Nest. I'm also the public address voice for the Coachella Valley Firebirds. And this episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 with any winning $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. So we just had a performance for the ages in Chechia, particularly in the capital city of Prague. And what I mean by that is the World Championships just concluded this past weekend. And I'll admit that I was home sick, not well. Um, Let's just say that I was burning up feverish. I mean, that kind of explains where I've been the past few days. But, you know, having a fever while I'm not working, I mean, it is what it is. (laughs) These things happen. But I was at least comfortable and watching the IIHF World Championships and seeing Lukas Dostal put on stellar performance after stellar performance. I mean, it really started with those first few games in group play. And once we got to divisional play, that's when Lukas Dostal just really took over completely for for the Czechs. In the last couple of games, in particular, the games that was determining seeding, I would say that Dostal probably got better as the tournament moved on. Yes, there was that first game that went into a shootout. There was the second game that went into a shootout. Yeah, it was pretty tough for the Czechs early on. And I even talked about this on a previous podcast. Look, beating Finland in a one nothing shutout, that's great, but that went all the way to a shootout. Dolstal didn't get any help there. Then there was that other game that Dolstal lost in the shootout. That one, I think, was pretty tough on Dostal as well. I mean, that was a tough loss to the Swiss. And that was the one where Kevin Fiala scored on Dostal in the shootout. I'm like, oh boy. Yeah, one of the Ducks' number one enemies, Los Angeles King, Kevin Fiala. So then we go into the knockout rounds. And that's when I said to myself, okay, now now it's getting kind of serious. Because this is do or die. And the do or die game that I think for me was the most impressive was the one nothing shutout against the United States. I will admit I was born in California, born in East LA, so I am an American citizen. In that sense, I was rooting for the United States. But as someone that covers the Anaheim Ducks and who has loved watching the progression of Lukash Dostal, I was impressed. I loved seeing his composure against the United States, and there was some pretty solid players on that U.S. team. I mean, they're no slouch. The United States just has a, a not a stacked lineup, but a good lineup. They got Seth Jones. They got Zach Warinski on defense. They got Brock Nelson. They got Johnny Gaudreau, who has, has been fairly good. They got Matt Boldy on their team who scored some important goals earlier in the tournament. You got Brady Kachuk, Cole Caulfield. But imagine if they had, you know, all the Kachuks on that team. Yeah, just imagine that. Hmm. What if you had, you know, Brady Kachuk with his brother, who's currently playing for the Florida Panthers right now? What if both of them were there? Hmm. What about if all the Hughes brothers were there? Hmm. Yeah, what if? 
what if, what if? What if Trevor Zegras scores on his buddy Luke Achadosta? Well, you know what? <laughs> when they get back to training camp in September, October, I have a feeling that Luke Achadosta is going to do what Trevor Zegras, what Trevor Zegras did to Jamie Drysdale a few years ago. And what I mean by that, remember about four years ago, I even did a whole ass podcast on this about Trevor Zegras being the tournament MVP in World Juniors. And he beat his buddy, Jamie Drysdale. And this did happen. This absolutely did happen. Where when they came back, Trevor Zegras kind of, not paraded it around, but he made sure to show off his gold medal to the rest of the team. And he kind of jokingly made it a point to show off the gold medal in front of his buddy, Jamie Drysdale, who was on Team Canada, and Z was on Team USA. USA. That was fun. But watching Luke Dostal just have the composure that he did during that game and turn away shot after shot after shot, that was a thing of beauty. And I think I was more proud of Dostal in that entire game. I really was. Dostal was by far the star of that game. He stopped every shot on that game. He was unstoppable. Again, a one nothing win. Pavel Zacha got the only goal for the Czechs in that game. That was impressive. But not nearly as impressive as the performance he put on against the Swiss in the gold medal game. That, I think, was the ultimate piece de resistance. In that game, Dostal stopped nearly every shot in what wound up, or actually he did stop every shot on that one. Um, it was a 2 nothing shutout. By the way, his third shutout in this competition. Yeah, three shutouts. I would say that's pretty effing impressive, if you ask me. And his stats alone are just remarkable. A 939 save percentage, a goals against of 1.58. He led all goaltenders with three shutouts in the tournament, led all goaltenders with a whopping 200 saves out of 213 shots. So he only allowed 13 goals in that action. He looked terrific and he was getting better as the tournament went on and there there were some good good stops on that one and he had to make every save because it was 0-0 after two periods of that gold medal game yeah I mean there was a little bit of nervousness watching that game I'll admit that as someone that loves watching Lukas Dostal just perform in that high level I was a little bit nervous for him But he was calm. He was calm throughout. And what wound up happening was David Pasternak had the game-winning goal on just a ripper from the face-off dot. And everybody just went nuts. The entire arena. Oh, by the way, this was in their home country of Chechia. And Pasta just came through. And after the game... People went to Pasta, but half the team went over to Lukas Dostal because he just helped lead that team to a gold medal. And the first time that that country hosting won it all since they were Czechoslovakia. That's how long it's been. Czechia wasn't even an independent country yet. They were still Czechoslovakia. This was still the 80s. This was the Cold War, for those of you historians. This was back when Germany was not unified. This was when the USSR was still a thing. This is when Czechoslovakia was still a thing. That's how long it has been since the Czechs won gold on home ice. And this meant a ton to Dostal, which actually... We're going to head to the first admission right now. So I'm going to talk about what this means to the Czechs and what some of his teammates have to say about his play in general. 
So we will get to all of that on the other side. And now a brief word from FanDuel. That is right. It is winner take all time in the NBA and NHL playoffs. In fact, it is conference finals time in the NBA and NHL. The Celtics have moved on, and now we're trying to see between the Timberwolves and the Mavericks. In the NHL, the final four teams still going at it. The Oilers, the Stars, the Panthers, the Rangers. Who's going to come out on top? Well, FanDuel is giving you a shot to bring home a big win of your own because right now new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 to bet on spreads, money, lines, player props, futures, and much more. So please visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make every playoff shot count. FanDuel is America's number one sportsbook and the official sports betting partner of the Locked On Podcast Network. And please, folks, gamble responsibly. Welcome back to episode number 886 of Locked On Anaheim Ducks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Once again, you're locked in with Jason J.D. Hernandez. All right, let's have a serious conversation about Lukash Dostal now. Let's really be serious. I just went over some of the numbers that Dostal had in this past Double IHF tournament where Chechia won gold medal again for the first time on home ice since the Cold War days. So it's been a long time for this young, relatively young country, I guess, by that metric. But I want to talk about the impact he's had on his teammates. And I'm going to start with his Chechia teammates. And one of those guys is obviously. David Pasternak. Pasternak, who scored the game-winning goal for Chechia in the gold medal winning game. I love this quote that I kind of dug up, and this is from Pasta. Quote, I'm so proud of Dosti. He's focused on every shot. It's easy to win the quarterfinals when your goalie doesn't let a single puck through. End quote. Obviously, he got a shutout in that quarterfinal game against the United States. And he was perfect on that game. But I think it gives the rest of the team a bit of ease when you have a goaltender that is that composed. And several players have said just how composed he is. And this has gone back to his days with the San Diego goals. Trevor Zegras, I remember, had some great quotes back in 2021 about Lukas Dostal that he was calm, he was cool. For someone to have that much poise, his age was brilliant. Sam Carrick, by the way, another player that had nothing but beaming quotes for Lukas Dostal. Um, looking back, uh, the composure that he gave our team, yes. Just I'm kind of parsing like parts of quotes here, but the fact that he said that, you know, he, he gave the goals a chance in that 2021 kind of weird Pacific Division playoff in Bakersfield. He absolutely gave that team a chance. And, you know, the boys just couldn't get that goal for him. Having those two overtime losses in games two and three in that best of three, yeah, that one stung a little bit. I mean, it didn't, like, really sting because it was a weird pandemic year. But it still stings nonetheless. You still want to, like, you play to win the game. To quote a famous football coach, you play to win the game. (laughs) But... (laughs) Look, looking back on that, that was his coming out party. And he even had the composure back then. It was great. Pavel Zacha said it was awesome to play in front of him. He won the game for us. Yeah, freaking right he did. He absolutely won the game for Chechia. You could talk about the guys that scored the goals and all that, but when you have a blank on the other side, then uh, hell yeah. Absolutely. Dominic Hasek, yes, the dominator, one of my favorite all-time goalies in the NHL, said Lukas Dostal does things the right way. I wouldn't change a thing in the way he plays. Freaking right. Also, I'm going to parse through this one. His teammate in Anaheim, Radko Gudis, who, by the way, had a pretty solid tournament. When Gudis is 100% healthy and when he plays with that much pride, then yeah, you'd better believe he's going to put out his best games. And Radko Gudis, who got a little bit, okay, more than a little bit wasted 
at the trophy <laughs> ceremony and the parade in Chechia. Um, Gudis even said, Dostal gives us a chance every night, and he was the MVP of this one. Yes. Oh, by the way, um, speaking of MVPs, I should point out that Dostal was the best goalie, and he was named to the all IIHF All Star team as the goal in the goalie position. So to see Dostal get that kind of recognition on a world level is amazing. Oh, by the way, Kevin Fiala won the tournament MVP in a losing effort, but Dostal being the the singular goalie to help win it all is brilliant. Oh, and by the way, this on a 31 save shutout. Yeah, 31 saves out of 31 in a gold medal freaking game. That not only takes confidence, that takes balls. That takes some that takes something pretty large to make that kind of performance and that kind of I don't want to say a comeback, but it kind of was. Because those two teams played each other earlier in the tournament and Switzerland won. Kevin Fiala scored the tournament MVP, scored a shootout goal against Lukas Dostal. And then Dostal sees Switzerland again. How do you come back from that? You shut him down. That is the ultimate just turn around. Let me show you what I've got moment. And he did it. So I've got to give a lot of praise to Dostal, which now begs the very serious question. He's only 23. He's got all this composure. We've just, we've seen kind of the same theme from several quotes that, you know, he should be just praised for being cool between the pipes, for giving his team peace of mind. When you give your teammates peace of mind behind the or between the goalposts, your team always has a shot to win. Even in Anaheim, like he never like really slumped his shoulders. He never made it obvious that he was no, he was calm. He was super calm. Even if he gave up a goal or two, he would just go right back out there and do the best he can. I mean, talk about, I don't want to say memory of a goldfish, but that's kind of what it was. Like, very short memory. He gives up a goal. He looks up at the screen, sees what happened. Like, okay, that happened. Okay, here's how that happened. Let's not do that again. He's a very methodical, very intelligent goalie. I don't think we talk about how intelligent of a goalie he is he studies the angles he studies players tendencies like he does a lot of studying off the ice and he's a very intelligent goalie so just gotta keep heaping the praise but now this begs another question all right he had this kind of performance in world championships what next I'll give my opinion about that on the other side. Welcome back to Locked On Anaheim Ducks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Once again, you're locked in with Jason J.D. Hernandez. And we're going to now talk about the crux of this conversation. But before we get into that, um, got to give a quick shout out here to uh, Michael, who I met over the weekend, I was doing, um, well, not the whole weekend, for a part of the weekend um, when I was finally feeling like up to it, um, I helped with a youth tournament and I got to give a shout out here to Michael, who I met. Uh, he wore a VGK cap, but he listens to Locked On Ducks, so just got to give a shout out. So Michael, if you're listening or watching, here's your shout out. It was great seeing you over the weekend at Sunrise Arena. All right, so let's talk about Dostal and his future with the Ducks. And why am I why am I talking about this? I've been on the Dostal train for a while. I mean, a long while now. And this is the kind of performance that can really boost one's confidence big time. I would even go so far as to say maybe split it with Gibby 50-50 this time. At worst, at best, make Lukash Dostal your number one goaltender. It's time. He's 23. 
he is entering his prime right now. So if your coach Greg Cronin, you know, either as the saying goes, crap or get off the pot, it is time to make him your number one starter. He's proven it. He's proven it on the AHL level. He's proving it on the NHL level. He's proven it on the world stage. He's already proven it as the best goalie in the tournament. And these are against world-class athletes too. These are against some of the best in the world. Yes, I know some of the other best are still playing in the cup final. Like, okay, I get it. I get that not everybody's playing. But most of who he's playing are still world-class hockey players. Some of them are all-stars. And he shut them down. He shut them out. He shut out USA, a pretty solid USA team too, with a pretty decent offense. Goaltending, eh, not so much. But USA fielded a pretty decent team. I wouldn't say they were the best team, and I didn't have them winning the gold at all. I had either Canada, Sweden, or... Or the Czechs. And I had the Czechs actually like third on that list. I had Sweden winning it all. I had Canada being second. But I, I had Czechia right there solely because of Lukas Dostal. I said this in a podcast three weeks ago before the tournament even started. That Dostal was going to was going to take this team far and they would medal. I said they would medal. Maybe not a gold medal, but I said they would medal. It's time. At worst, I mean, at worst, give Dostal 35 to 40 starts and give Gibby the other 45. No, actually, no, I don't, I don't even believe myself saying that. Like, I don't. Like, in my heart of hearts, like, my opinion, split it down the middle. 40, 41, 42, or just, just do it already. Just make Dostal your number one goalie. He equaled John Gibson in a lot of anal- of analytics categories. He equaled Gibby in a lot of those statistics, such as high danger save percentage, as in the goals um, saved above expected. They were virtually identical by season's end. So wh- what do you do with Dostal? Well, I tell you what you're not going to do. You're not going to just let him sit on the pine for most of the season and only give him about 30 starts. You're not going to do that. That's not good for his development. It's not good for Dostal. He's proving that he belongs in this league, and I've contended that his ceiling is number one starter. That's his ceiling. I believe that. So give him... Give him much more than that amount of starts. Much, much more. How much more? Well, let's look at his stats for just the last couple of seasons. 2023, he started 17 games. This past season, he started 38 games, partially because Gibby was hurt some of that time. I say 45 starts. Give him the majority of the starts. Let's see what he can do. The save percentage, again, almost identical to Gibby. The goals against, almost identical to Gibby. And that's fine. But maybe with some new assistant coaches who we still don't know about yet, this could be a chance for the Ducks team themselves to try to make some noise this year. This this is the time to go after some really good defensive defensemen in the free agency or by trade or by draft. They have the money. They have the picks. This is the time to go for it. So now this is really the litmus test for Greg Cronin. It's the biggest litmus test for Pat Verbeek. And if Dostal can get this opportunity, then this would be a massive litmus test for him as well. So... That's, I mean, the Ducks brass have got to be watching this unfold, thinking, oh, maybe, maybe it's time. Yeah, it's time. Join me on this, will you? It's time. Number one starter, Luke Achidostal. That's all. That's all I'm going to say on this podcast. We're going to wrap it up here. 
Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Don't forget this podcast is free and available across all platforms, including Stitcher, Spotify, Odyssey, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, etc. Um, I do want to mention this before we wrap up. Um, as you've noticed, episodes have been a little bit um, sporadic. I did men- mention that I was feeling pretty ill. Actually, I was in bed like almost an entire day. Like I legit slept for about 17, 18 hours trying to break whatever it was I had. So it just knocked me out. But I am trying to get as many episodes out as possible. Um, don't know if I'm going to be able to get an episode out from Acrisure Arena on Wednesday, given everything that's going on, given the recent news up with the Kraken relating to the Firebirds. Uh, by the way, a bit of NHL news. Uh, current Firebirds head coach Dan Bilesma just got named the head coach for the Seattle Kraken starting next season. But Dan Bilesma is going to finish off the season in Coachella. So just a bit of NHL news. So there is going to be a lot of hoopla around the arena before Wednesday's game and won't be able to record after Wednesday's game because they'll be, um, wow, I'm blanking on the word here. Oh, they're converting. That's what it was. Yeah, they're converting the arena after both game one and game two. So I won't be able to do a post game, um, but I'm going to try. I'm really going to try, folks. Anyway, um, Don't forget to check out the Locked On Sports Today channel, the 24-7 YouTube channel for Locked On Sports. So check that out. Uh, You could find me on Twitter X at StimpyJD. And you could email me at LockedOnAnaheimDucks at gmail.com. And once again, thank you all for your continued support. It is so greatly appreciated. For Locked On Anaheim Ducks, I'm Jason J.D. Hernandez saying have a great rest of the day. Please remember to be safe out there. Please be kind to one another. And Ducks, fly together.